Hey, what's up guys, Matt Laidlaw here. So I wanted to make a quick video and talk to you guys about a style or trend that I've seen just explode in the last five years. And really it's created an entirely new subculture within the Harley Davidson world. And that is your club style, for lack of a better term, like your clubbed out Dyna. Or nowadays, since they've discontinued the Dyna, your clubbed out Cruiser or clubbed out Softail. And this is a style that about five years ago, like I said, really it's picked up mainstream. Before that, it was really just seen among MCs, you know, going back to FXR days, you know, a lot of guys would apply this club style of a, a tall, like half fairing and tall T bars, a raised up suspension for better travel and a souped up engine. This was mainly seen, you know, within M the MC world, and in no way was this style hatched from Sons of Anarchy. I just want to get that out of the way right away. There's a lot of guys that think that Sons of Anarchy made this style popular and that couldn't be further from the truth but really I've been trying to push this to Harley Davidson just anybody that will listen to me at Harley Davidson Motor Company I've been trying to tell them that hey you need to make bikes with this type of style on him they will sell extremely well and every time I do that they always tell me well that style and that look is a very is very unique to just your geography it's a very geographical style and taste to the west coast and I, I completely disagree with that I've seen the style just get more and more and more popular I fear now that this is a style that you know may be peaking I don't know hopefully it goes on for a long time maybe we're just getting started I don't know but I feel like we should have jumped on this a lot sooner. When I say we, I'm talking about you know, Harley Davidson uh, in general should have jumped on this a long time ago. But I wanted to get your guys' opinion, and this is really one of the main premises behind making this video. I want to get your guys' opinion on this style. Maybe you already have a Dyna, or maybe you have a new Street Bob, or Fat Bob, or Low Rider that you've built with this type of style on it already. I, I want you guys to, to comment in the comment section below and let me know if you like this style or dislike it. And if you like it or dislike it, you know, let me know where you're from, what state you're from, what country you're from. And I just just want to get some type of a an idea of if this style is only unique to California the West Coast scene because I don't think it is you know I, I go around on a lot of different people's Instagram pages and a lot of forums and chat rooms and, and discussions I have on my YouTube channel and I feel like this is a style that's extremely popular and I also see this as a gateway into the Harley Davidson world as well I feel like now where a lot of the inspiration behind the style came organically from um, you know the MC scene I feel like now a lot of it comes from your freestyle Moto X riders like your dirt bike riders and a lot of guys that grew up riding dirt bikes or grew up with the maybe the X Games scene or grew up watching guys you know like Brian Deegan or Twitch Steinberg or Travis Pastrana, a lot of those guys that are now maybe getting older and transitioning into the Harley Davidson world and want a bike that's good for the road as opposed to the dirt. A lot of those guys are going into you know Harley Davidson and they are going for this style. So I see this style just a really, really good avenue for getting more people into the Harley Davidson realm. It seems like there's a lot of discussion nowadays around Harley Davidson and not appealing to a younger demographic. And if, if Harley Davidson wants to know how to appeal to a younger demographic, this is it. I cannot express that any more clear. This club style or, you know, and the club style and using that terminology, I know isn't popular among some people, but I just use that terminology because I know when I use that terminology, everybody will know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyways, I just want to jump into Instagram and a few other places and kind of talk about this style that has just blown up and emerged. And I just feel like Harley Davidson is, is completely ignoring it because they feel like it's just a West Coast phenomenon. So let me know guys in the comments below where you live, if this is something appealing to you, or if you hate it. Let me know where you live as well because I, I'd be very curious as to know exactly who hates it, who likes it, what you guys think about it, and get a good idea if, if Harley Davidson were to build a bike that is kind of this club style, West Coast club style, whatever you want to call it, you know, I want to get a good idea if this is a bike that people are going to want to buy. So I'm going to jump on Instagram here for a second to kind of illustrate some of the points I'm trying to make and, and bring up another big point that I want to make. And that is these bikes, it's not just about the look and the style and the functional benefit that your fairings and your performance 
builds on the engine and everything bring about but really the clubbed out dyna has brought forth a whole new subculture within the harley davidson community and a lot of that subculture has been heavily influenced by freestyle harley davidson riders you know i told you there's a couple of factors that really influenced the emergence of this movement that's going on right now and that is you know, the grassroots MC dinos. And then in recent years, I feel like a lot of that dirt bike, freestyle Moto X influence have, has come in, especially with some of those athletes now riding these types of bikes. And guys like Robbie Madison too, just to name one more. And also I feel like the freestyle Harley Davidson scene has gotten a lot more prominent in the last five years as well. You got guys, everybody on a dyno wants to wheelie it on Instagram nowadays. Uh, but one group that I think was real instrumental in in influencing kind of this culture as well as far as freestyle Harley riding is Unknown Industries. And I've seen Harley Davidson kind of do some things cooperative with cooperatively with these guys before uh, to promote like their flat tracking. I know these guys do some of the flat track racing as well that Harley Davidson promotes. So yeah, Harley Davidson has, has been involved with these guys, but yeah, it's all about the wheelies and the burnouts. Uh, this one is right outside of uh, Neptune's net there. But you know the bikes they build, they're they're completely in tune with what's hot right now. And these guys they have FXRs and FXRs have a shorter wheelbase and they're lighter, so they're easier to wheelie and, and do stunts on. But you know here you got a 2018 Street Bob right there, and you know here's a shot of uh, Jeremy Steinberg there. And so yeah, these guys have been real influential. Just the aggressive riding Harley stunt guys has been a big influence which again is really, really hot with the younger crowd. And a lot of these guys that are transitioning over from the dirt bike world, this style and this type of bike is gonna be very, very appealing. Here's a good shot of a couple of bikes I'm talking about here. The other thing that's kind of interesting is a lot of these fairings you see on here are, are the genuine Harley Davidson fairing. Uh, like the one, on, these two are both genuine Harley Davidson fairings. A lot of people refer to them as the clamshell fairing, but these fairings are designed and, and marketed in Harley Davidson's catalog as a Sportster fairing. I don't know anybody who's ever put one of these fairings on a Sportster. They all go on dinas, at least at our shop anyways. And so, yeah, it's it's just a another big influential factor in this in this culture is, you know, the the freestyle type of nature of these bikes and, and the performance, the performance cruiser aspect of these bikes. So I'm going to go to one more Instagram account here. It's called Dynamite Crew, and this is a real popular like club style dyna slash club style cruiser type account. They just post a lot of these like dinas and you know some of the new soft tails that are clubbed out. But you, know, you can kind of see the general theme of the bikes here. The fairings, you know, you've got a Connolly fairing, there's a JD Customs fairing, there's a rifle fairing. They're all pretty dang popular. And I want to point something out too. The these fairings and the overall look of the fairing is nothing like what's on the sport glide. And when the when the Sport Glide first came out, and for the record, I think it's a great bike mechanically. It's an awesome bike, but from a cultural standpoint, and it and a looks and the image and style standpoint, I feel like the Sport Glide is a very big missed opportunity with what's hot right now. I feel like it's very out of touch with a style that could have been capitalized on a lot better that it did not. So. You know, the Sport Glide, what I'd like to see is, is Harley Davidson come out with a fairing that looks like an old FXRT fairing like this or a T Sport fairing. And, and again, the, this is Harley Davidson's history. These aftermarket companies that are coming out with these fairings, they're pulling off of Harley Davidson's style. And so Harley Davidson has the history there, they have all the rights to these products. And so they just need to make a modern version of some of these fairings. So this leads me to my final point here, guys. I don't want to bore you too much. But if I were to have my say, I would come out with two bikes, two of these clubbed out bikes with two different fairing styles. I would do one like this. It's like the old FXRT style uh, with this real old school single headlamp here with a, almost like a full wraparound, almost like a mini roguelide fairing on it. But I'd modernize it, of course. But you want to make it unmistakably, you know, a, a throwback to the FXRT, and then even these lower these leg fairings down here would be awesome. So almost like a, and then hard bags like this. I mean, I would almost copy this bike straight up. Uh, I'll just be honest. And they need to take their their FXRT 
and make a modern version on the new soft tail frame of the FXRT with hard bags like this, like these case hard bags, which the Sport Glide kind of did. Um, and the Sport Glide bags aren't bad at all. But so I'd make two models, one a throwback from the old FXRT that looks almost identical to what we see here with tall T bars and everything. And then I would do a bike that has something that is reminiscent of the old T-Sport fairing, something like this. I think this, this fairing here is like a, a JD Customs fairing or something like that. But yeah, that's what I would do. And you gotta make them tall and you gotta make them club style and you gotta put tall T-bars on there as well and put a tall travel suspension on there. Harley Davidson is so worried about uh, accomplishing a low seat height for people so more people can ride their bikes and I get it, that's important. But for these models, put a big old shock back there and with good travel, something that's going to be awesome for freestyle stuff or hauling ass down the freeway. And if someone wants to put a lowered shock on it, then let them do that. So the seat height will be lower so more people can be involved. So here's another just beautiful FXRT. So they need to come out with something like this. I mean, this, this should be their inspiration right here. I mean, this thing is, is gorgeous. So yeah, anyways, that's, that's Dynamite Crew. If you're into this scene and this look then this is probably a good account to to follow if you haven't already so here's actually a great shot of the second fairing i would do like this is like a t-sport type of a fairing yeah just a, a overall look like this so you'd have two bikes one is more of a touring oriented bike that has the old fxrt fairing on it with the with a bag of some some type like a hard bag preferably but if not something like a uh, a real thick, durable nylon bag, kind of like the the Connolly bags they make. Then have like more of a slim down, uh, minimalist style clubbed out bike. One with like an FXRT fairing. Do the gauges up here on the handlebars as well. Um, and these bikes are just they're going to do well. I mean, I, I would bet my life on it. Uh, and and people other than people just in Southern California will buy these motorcycles. I wanna to talk to you guys about a bike that's a perfect proof of concept of what I'm talking about here, and that bike is called the Lowrider S. Not the Lowrider Special, uh, it's called the Lowrider S. I hate it when people call it a Lowrider Special, that's not the name, it's a Lowrider S. Anyways, off that rant. So this bike is a perfect example of Harley Davidson hitting this trend, although I feel like they could have hit it harder than they did with this bike. Uh, I feel like this bike did have a lot of the elements I've been talking about, a lot of the Dyna Club style elements with the little fairing, although they call that a speed screen or like a bikini fairing. And the bars are kind of a, a T-bar style, just not very tall. And so for that reason, I feel like Harley Davidson was one foot in and one foot out with this bike, but they also have it, the 110 cubic inch engine on here with the premium ride shocks and all the blacked out cosmetics. And so I feel like you know, Harley Davidson did build a bike here that really appealed to the culture that I've been talking about, the, the club style Dyna culture. And so, you know, and, and really the, the proof is in, you know, the sales and, and the community. You know, these bikes, at least at our dealership, sold extremely well. I still have people calling me for these bikes today. But again, I feel like Harley Davidson could do it better. You know, do the bigger fairing, do the T-Sport fairing, do the FXRT fairing. I would do two models, one with the FXRT with bags on it and one with the T-Sport with no bags on it and play with the finishes on the engine. Maybe do the T-Sport one and all blacked out, maybe the FXRT fairing, do it with a combination of black and like the bronze that they've been using on some of their bikes. I think that would be really, really nice. But this bike is a perfect example and I don't even think Harley Davidson, when they designed this bike, that they meant to appeal to this this crowd that I've been been describing. I think they, you know, by accident, made a bike that really appealed to this crowd, and you know, it, it struck gold. The reason I say that is because if if they purposely built a bike to appeal to this crowd and this culture, then why wouldn't they have come out with another bike in on the new soft tail frame when it came out? You know, I felt like the, the Lowrider S was a bike that they built as part of phasing out their Dyna family because it only lasted a year and a half. And, you know, so they, they were using up, you know, some of their old, you know, 110 engines and black parts and, and bars and fairings and stuff like that, which is, I feel like, what, what the Sportsters are going through right now with the 48 Special and the 1200 iron as well. But anyways, that's a different subject. This is a, the Lowrider S is a perfect example of what they can do by appealing to this culture. That bike is wildly popular. It's still popular today and it's not even in, in production anymore. And I feel like they, they were only, you know, scratching the, the tip of the iceberg with that bike. You know, they could have gone two feet in with the style and done a, a proper club style fairing on it 
and you know the uh, the T bars could be a taller T bar. So there's just they could go an extra step or two and make these bikes a lot more appealing. So this was an image that spread like wildfire in the Instagram world, and it looks like it was done by Black Eddie. And I'm assuming he probably just threw a, an FXDR up in Photoshop and kind of made some changes. Like you got like the DynaShocks back here and it looks like you got the frame concept of an FXR style frame. And he put an FXR T fairing on here with the fairing spoilers and everything. And so, you know, he basically says that, you know, that, that this is what they actually should have released. But, you know, this is just kind of another proof of concept where there's just a lot of people out there that are begging for this type of a bike. Um, and when they see things like the FXR, the FX, or when they see things like the FXDR, which is an awesome bike, and I've ridden it. If you haven't watched my review already, check that out. But the FXDR is a great bike. There's just not a huge crowd begging for it right now. And there's a huge crowd begging for this style of bike right now. And so this is just kind of another proof of concept that there, there really is a big crowd out there really looking for this type of a bike. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. The, this video kind of turned into a little bit of a rant and open letter to Harley Davidson, but really the main premise again is I want to get your guys' feedback on your feelings about this style. Do you have a bike like this? Do you have a club style Dyna or one of the new soft tail frame bikes? Do you hate this style? Let me know where you live as well. I want to get a good idea of where people live that love this style and where people live that hate this style. Let me know the state or the country you live in. Maybe you wish you had one, but you don't own one. Let me know that as well. And if you want to see Harley Davidson, make one or both of the club style Harleys that I mentioned in this video give me a thumbs up as well and maybe if we get enough positive feedback on here someone from Harley Davidson Motor Company will stumble across this video and someone from the product development team will feel like there is a demand for this style of bike I certainly feel like there's a huge demand for this style of bike so hopefully it can happen thanks a lot for watching guys take care bye bye